So you think you might have a problem with your roses. It could be rose rosette. Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Church. I'm a horticulture agent in Collin County, Texas. I work for Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. So this is a brief video presentation on rose rosette disease. So rose rosette disease is actually caused by a virus. It's called rose rosette virus. And in 2011, scientists discovered or properly described the, the disease and the virus. And so studies have shown that the virus becomes systemic within the rose plant. And so pruning symptomatic portions of the rose likely will not cure the rose of the virus. Grafting is shown to transmit the virus. And in some studies, limited mechanical transmission of the virus has occurred. Primarily, the virus is spread by an areified mite, which is called the vector of this virus. There are several diagnostic steps, but primarily we want to observe the symptoms on the plant. Uh, we can uh, run diagnostic tests in the lab to confirm that uh, with DNA analysis. The types of symptoms that the virus causes on the, the rose is witch's broom, excessive thorn production, excessive lateral shoot growth, excessive canes, leaf proliferation and malformation, red pigmentation or discoloration, and eventually plant death. It should be noted that we've noticed that you can have different symptoms on different varieties and how they appear on the, the plant differs. So it's important to notice that. And some of the pictures that I'll show you will indicate that. So first of all, excessive number of thorns uh, that's a pretty good indicator of rose rosette disease. Excessive number of thorns is not normal growth for roses, pretty much of any kind, and so that's an indication. A witch's broom is another major indicator of rose rosette infection. Uh, this is an extreme example of where you have multiple branching from one location. Basically, it looks like a broom. A red pigmentation of stems and leaves. In this situation, uh, both these roses were infected and showing symptomatic stems, but then they were pruned pretty heavily to, to cover up those symptoms. Basically, the landscaper didn't know that the what the disease was and didn't know anything about it, so he thought just pruning it off would cure the plant, but actually it does not. So malformed leaves. In this situation, of this variety doesn't have the red pigmentation, but has malformed leaves. And this can be an indicator of the disease. Uh, here's an extreme example of um, the witch's broom, uh, as well as uh, red pigmentation and malformed leaves. And so you can see normal growth on the left in this picture, uh, but then you can see the, the disease causes the stem uh, to grow abnormally. Here's another situation you might see where uh, the growth on this rose doesn't look quite normal. And upon closer inspection, you can see excessive number of thorns, malformed leaves, even the necrosis of the, the plant tissue. Here's another example of uh, extreme red pigmentation of the stems, leaves, uh, and excessive number of thorns, and even witch's broom. Uh, in this situation, uh, this courtyard was planted with a lot of roses and one plant was infected and eventually the virus was spread throughout the entire courtyard where there may be planted uh, hundreds of roses planted in this courtyard. And so all these, these roses that are infected will have to be removed in order to uh, be able to replant with the roses. So there is no cure for infected plants, so we must remove the plant, including all the roots. And by removing the plants that are infected, we can prevent the spread of the disease. And that spread is primarily by areified mites. Removing a symptomatic stem will not cure the plant. And we don't know of any resistant varieties either. So what is the future of roses in North Texas? Well, we need to eradicate the disease, and, and it's going to take a, a community-wide approach to stop the spread. So it's cities, towns, neighborhoods, and neighbors working together uh, to educate each other to make sure we know about how to properly identify 
and control the disease. And by removing these infected roses in our community, we can decrease the chances of reinfecting newly planted roses. So we encourage you to follow research-based recommendations because they provide the most effective approach to combating the disease. If you have any questions, I encourage you to contact your local county extension office or Master Gardener Help Desk to find out more information about this disease.